Hey, welcome to Well Made. My name is Kat Kamalani. Here we dive deep into topics like wellness, food, money, relationships, motherhood, and achieving your wildest dreams. Because I promise, if I can do it, I know you can too. We sit with experts and get into the nitty gritty where they spill all their secrets with me. So get cozy, relax, and let's have a heart-to-heart chat. We're back. (laughs) Welcome to freaking season two of Well Made. We're here. We made it. Here we are. (laughs) And we're in Hawaii. So we are going to jump in to everything Hawaii. What better way to start start off season two than talking about Hawaii? So on my social media platform, Kat Kamalani, I asked you guys, what questions do you want answered about moving to Hawaii? All the details, everything. So nothing is off limits here. So should we just jump into the questions? Let's do it. Okay. The items, Catherine M. She asked, what made you guys want to move there? Take the floor, babe. So I feel like it's always been a priority for us to to make it back to, you know, kind of like my roots. And you've been exposed to this place and the beauty and the just the the vibe that you get, the aloha spirit that you get from the place. Not just the people but like the actual vibe of the the mana of the island. And I think it's been a priority for us to move here, bring our family here and grow up here with the kids. Yeah. We, it's actually funny. <clears throat> a lot of people don't know this. When we were dating, I wanted to move to Hawaii to experience, you know, the island life. And when we were dating, you were in football camp and I came out here by myself. You actually came out help me get settled here, but I was going to live here for a summer by myself. And I lived in an area that was just not what you think of Hawaii because everyone thinks of Hawaii as probably what my, our Instagram looks like very tropical, but that's not it. Like Oahu actually in Waikiki is very city. Like I say, it's almost like Las Vegas. Um, so coming out and living in a certain area, I was just kind of shocked because it was Target right next to us. It was shopping. It looked like you're very suburb. Not to mention like on Oahu, it's it's about, I think, like 90% of the state's population. So it's very yeah. dense. Like, There's traffic. Ton, tons of people everywhere. 24-7. Mm-hmm. So when I came out, came for a summer, went horrible. Went, like that is the worst experience I've ever had in Hawaii in my it life. It tested you, huh? It tests me. And that's true. The island tests you every time you come out here. I swear things always happen to us. And then they're like, okay, yeah, like you can stay here. So then I went back. We dated a couple more years and I wanted to try like the true Hawaii. Be It's not like the Instagram photos Hawaii. I wanted to be with the culture. I wanted to be connected with the Aina, which is land. I really wanted to be ingrained in your you and who you were. And you didn't. You didn't want to move here. And that was like a big, like, I would say not disagreement, but I wanted to live here and raise our kids and you didn't at first. Yeah, it was. Uh, the fact of the matter is most people that live here are multi-generational households. They live in homes that have been built like in the 50s and prior to that. So very old homes, small homes, multifamily homes. So you're talking small, old places that are shared that, you know, you just don't have the luxuries. Well, that's what you did. Yeah. and that, You, you lived in like this 400 square foot little tiny home yeah, that was, was a, a complete culture shock. No yeah. table, yeah, no it was beds. It two bedroom house, one bath, and there was eight of us living in there, you know? And yeah. so it, my vision and my thought of living back here was that, and I didn't want that for us or our kids. Yeah. But, you know, we've been fortunate enough to make it to where we are that we can afford something that's a little better than that, but also living within our means and not, you know, living beyond that. Yeah. That is what you thought. Okay. Coming back. Why would I ever live in Hawaii again if I'm living like a king in the mainland? Yeah, and then your, you're your like, dollar I'm goes living. far. Like, you know, I yeah. have a, I have AC. I got, yeah. <laughs> I got a, a dish, bed, a dishwasher, got beds. I have like, a table. Everyone, that was insane. Every, you, everyone has their own bedroom. Like yeah. our, our kids have known nothing other than having their own bedroom. Yeah. Like there's eight of us and we all shared a bedroom, you know, yeah. like for, for a period of my life, I slept in the living room, yeah. you know, just to get some separation. But fast forward to where we are now, how we got on the same page. It was actually a sore subject in our marriage because I talked about it all the time about moving to Hawaii. 
I just felt like Utah, even though my family's there and I'm extremely close with my family, I didn't feel like that was home for me. I, I just always was drawn to the no makeup, the chill lifestyle, the aloha spirit, the being in, I'm just obsessed with like organic fruits and growing our own vegetation, um, our kids being ingrained in their culture. And so I all the time was talking to you like how I want to move, but that was never something that we could do because we simply couldn't afford it with you being a firefighter and me being a fly attendant or slash stay home mom doing social media that wasn't full time. So I came up with this crazy idea with Kiloni and we decided we are going to go and live in Hawaii for a few months. And Kiloni was all about that. He was like, yeah, let's do it. So we found a little place. And we came out here and we were instantly like, what are we doing? Why are we living in Utah? There's just something about the place, especially when you get to walk out to the beach, you know, and you're just in isolation and you get to stare out into the the abyss, you know, yeah. the horizon and you get to contemplate and think about your life and what your life looks like. Mm. And What's just, important. Yeah, and it just gives you clarity for what actually matters, you know, yeah. like what matters, a nice and big house in Utah or... Yeah. A smaller, nice home, but with the people you love. Yeah. So then we decided, okay, we're going to make this a thing every year and we're going to come out for a few months and then go back home. And so we came out one of the years we came out, we bought a house back in Utah and we were building the house where we had our own town home we built and we we're selling that and going into a home. And it was like our dream home. It was everything that we could want. It's got the three, four car garage it has the big backyard it has like the big high vaulted ceilings. It's a brand new house in a beautiful neighborhood with kids everywhere. It was the home that we were like, holy crap. Like we made it. We did this. Like we worked for this and we came out to Hawaii and we were in the process of building it while we were living here. And we went home and within like a week, we moved out of our townhouse into our new home. And I just remember feeling so empty. And I would cry to you almost every day, not feeling happy. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, this is not what I want. This is everything that society tells us that we should have. Society tells us we should have the big house, the brand new cars, the the big backyard. Yeah. You wanted it too. Like, and we were like, what are we doing? And this is, we have built such an amazing community here that we went home and we're, we looked at each other. We're like, all right, we are doing this. We are done. We are going to figure out a way to make it permanent. Well, I think, I think what we noticed when we were here and and maybe you've learned along the way is that you don't need much here in order to be happy. You know, the stuff doesn't make people happy. You know, it, it's truly the experiences and the relationships you have. You need money, but you don't need stuff (laughs) to live here. Uh, Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Or, or you're going to be sleeping at the beach. (laughs) Okay. That probably, that was a long answer for that, but that is how we got here. So let's dive into why did we choose Oahu and not Maui where you're from? Well, just shortly put, I love Maui and I love everything it has to offer. It's so beautiful. People are awesome. Where I grew up, it was in a a beach town, uh, really close to the beach. Um, Kihei. Kihei. Yep. But uh, there's something about the vibe up here. I love it. Uh, I love the surf they have here. I love the beach town. I love the vibe. Like we've built a, a beautiful community. Uh, everything is accessible by bike and it's just slower pace for me. And we also have the city here that you can drive to if you want to do things where some of the other islands don't have, you know? Yeah. I think we would live on Maui, but there is just some humps that we would have to get over that probably would never get over (laughs) to live on Maui, but Maui is beautiful and it's amazing. But coming here to Oahu, we have built the greatest community that I feel like I could ever have. And it truly is part of the people. And that is like one thing that I tell people that want to move to Hawaii. And that's like a big question I have on my social media is we want to move to Hawaii. What are some advice you would give? And I say like coming to Hawaii is not coming like the touristy way and like experiencing the touristy luau's and doing like the big hotels and all of that. The beauty in Hawaii is its people. And it's also the land, which they call Aina. And 
ingraining yourself into the culture that way. And so the community that we built on Oahu was just perfect for our family. Yeah. And I think for people, it's important for people to know that, you know, 99% of the people that live here have a grind. Like it's, it's a grind to be here. It's a grind to, to live here and they've got to work extremely hard to, to make a, make it work here. Multiple jobs, multiple jobs and everybody works, you know, but it's worth it for, you know, for us, we're, we're fortunate enough to, to be here to do, to do this. All right. Let's find the next question. Um, how much did it cost to make the actual move to Hawaii? Pods, car, transportation, getting the house, everything. It's, uh, it's all right. A- let's break it down. Okay. So, all right. Getting a place here, first off, is really difficult because either you have to know somebody or you, it's where we're living at. It's a lot of surfers live here. A lot of people are chasing the surf between where we're at, Bali and Australia. So there's a lot of rentals here. So either A, you have to know somebody to get into a rental. Winter season is really difficult to get here. Or B, people don't sell their houses a lot. And so if you want to buy a house, you're competing with a lot of people who are cash offers trying to get in. It's, so it's no cheap home either. It's I think, not. I think you can't find anything for almost less than $2 million up here. If you're going to buy, if you're going to buy. And that's so. like a tear down, have to re put yes. money into it and everything. Mm-hmm. And the rent here is not cheap either. So let's start with the reload cubes. We did four reload cubes and oh, what was that? I just, for the reload cubes. And they first quoted us to have eight reload cubes for the size of our house and everything we had. And we sold three fourths of our stuff. So we were down to just the bare minimums, like a mattress, a dresser, furniture, especially because furniture, because you can't get furniture here. Yeah. Really, really hard. But it's just extremely difficult and pricey. And a lot of people don't ship here. Yes. And so. It was literally bare basics we sent here. And so we sent four reload cubes, which are really itty bitty and tiny. And that costs about 10 grand. Car, car transportation. So you have the option to get it picked up from your home, like wherever you live and then take it to the coast and they ship it there. Luckily enough, your dad's awesome. And he drove both of our cars down to Cali. Yeah, he's the best dad in the world. So, you know, it's probably like 100, 150 just for gas to get to Cali. And then from there, uh, shipping your vehicle cost cost us about fifteen hundred dollars each. Yeah, to get it here, and that's way cheaper than buying here. Yeah, I mean, I used to be in the car, car business, so I and people used to buy from Utah to ship the cars here, and the markup was insane. Mm-hmm. So it just it didn't make sense for us to sell and then rebuy. So yeah, yeah. we did what we did. Okay, um, how much does it cost for a family of four to live there? We are thinking of moving. Well, buckle up, Buttercup. <laughs> our rent alone is uh, very, very high, very high. <laughs> <laughs> and then on top of that, then you're just talking our Costco trips. You know, uh, what's our first Costco trip? Our first Costco trip was like twenty two hundred bucks. Yeah, something. and our second one was around two thousand. And this is like every ten days, I would say. Granted, it is. It's a startup. We're it, built. We're building our. Yeah. You know, we have all the things. You've got to buy the rice. Yeah, just all the seasonings, all your backstock. Yeah, like, you know. So the startup's expensive, but I would say that average. You know, it's like a thousand dollars. It's probably about. It's probably about a thousand bucks biweekly Costco, yeah. or something. Yeah, and and then gas is like over. It's like four twenty a, a gallon mm-hmm. for gas. So it's also very pricey. Very expensive. But one of the questions that we have, it says, how do you afford to live there? It's so crazy expensive. And I think one of the things that Kiloni and I, like, we just do this, like, really, I don't know. We just get each other and we're on the same wavelength of life and what we want out of life. Kiloni and I, we're just not spenders. We don't care to have the brand new clothes. We don't care to have the brand new technology. We really don't spend money on anything. Like we spend our money on travel. That's where we spend our money. And food. And food. Yeah. We <laughs> love like good organic yes. food. So like mm-hmm. we'll go to Costco and we'll buy, we will spend more money on like the higher quality stuff, like organic. And our kids are, have allergies to dairy and gluten. So we have to buy more like dairy-free, gluten-free things. But 
that being said, it's put us in a position of where we have scraped every single penny, literally every penny that has got us here. And we still, to this day, are super frugal. We're not cheap. We're frugal. So we just like, I just think we prioritize experiences yeah. you know, over yeah. stuff. You yeah. And, and you I, can't have stuff here. And yeah, we don't have space for stuff. No, we don't have space. We have space for surf, some surfboards and some bikes. Yeah. Like, that's about it. So it is, it is crazy experience, expensive here, but I truly do feel the people that we've like interacted with. A lot of people don't prioritize things. They're not having a million things in their closet. There's not a ton of toys. Kids are outside. So it's just changing your lifestyle of what's important to you. And that's how you can make it work. That's what we love about this place. Just so basic and simple, you know? So, let's see. Catherine M. Hurt said, greatest challenge since moving. I would say the greatest challenge for me is with the kids in the sense of Luna doesn't have all her friends. Where we lived back at home, we lived obviously in a suburb area where there was eight different houses that had all the girls that Luna was best friends with Brooks had his crew of boys. And so every day during summer, they would all come to our house and it was all day, every day, 20 kids in. And that's just, if you lived in that neighborhood, you were just like, okay, there's going to be 20 kids in my house at one given time or in the backyard and you're feeding popsicles to everyone. So where we're at, there's kids, but it's not kids of, in the sense of like house, 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 and everyone's just running around. And I think that's been a little difficult for me, not having Luna have that friends that she's playing with all day. Yeah, it's it has been hard, but I think it'll come with time, you know. We'll, yeah. Once we get get the kids more into things, we'll we get well, more she kids. Is. We'll get more kids out here. She's doing hula right now. She starts dive lessons with a professional diver how to dive like in the ocean, and then they're both in skateboarding lessons to yep. help them with surfing. And so it's yeah, it's just getting them ingrained in culture. We're also putting them in a course called Tutu and Me, which is an amazing thing like preschoolers Um, or young kids go with their parent and they learn about the Hawaiian culture. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing, but it'll get there. Okay. What is the pace of life for folks who work the traditional job in Hawaii? This is kind of hard because we don't have traditional jobs. A lot of people don't even know what we do and how we earn money. Well, I'll just tell you straight up what, what it's like. And I, cause I have people that live that still, you know, it, especially here on Oahu, like we have neighbors that will drive to town or no okay, Yeah. They'll drive to the city, which takes a minimum of an hour drive commute. And then they're working all day. And by the time they finish, it's another, it's another hour plus commute easily, easily an hour. Probably it's like an hour 20 to get home. And, and this is for most places going to Costco, going to target. It takes over an hour drive because the traffic's so bad and it's so slow. Yep. And then, you know, they, they just kind of, they, they come with their family. They have a little time with themselves, whatever they can do. And then it's just rinse and repeat. You know, mm. it's, it's really, and then the weekends are, are definitely busier out because people have time off, but it's, yeah. like I said earlier, it's, it's quite a grind to live here for sure. And I want to make thing, one thing clear. I understand the lifestyle you and I live is not what a typical Hawaiian lives like. Not typical, even just Hawaiian. It's just people. That's, yes. Yeah, people. Like, and a lot of families have to live together. Aunt, uncle, grandpa, cousins, nieces, nephews all live together in one household to make it work. We are very privileged in doing this job. I will never, ever take this job for granted because there was a time where Keloni was working 72 hours a week doing firefighting and doing weight auto group, which was a business with cars with the owner. And I was also a flight attendant trying to make ends meet with social media and just trying to grow my social media. And I was at home taking care of two babies. Like it was so hard and living paycheck to paycheck. And thankfully we weren't, we've never been spenders. We've always had like a little bit of cushion and savings, but being in the position we are now where we get the opportunity to do podcasting, we've built this podcast together. Kiloni does some real estate. I do my social media. I work with brands and I will never take this for granted because I know so many people wish they could be in this position. And so I just want to make one thing clear. Like I understand we are very privileged living here. And that's why I do feel this big sense of responsibility to give back to Hawaii because 
if you're using Hawaii as a backdrop and earning money, whatever it may be, if it's real estate, if it's your business, if it's social media, I feel like there is a sense of responsibility you should be giving back to the community and giving back to the people and giving back to the land that you're so fortunate to use. Yeah, I, And I don't even know if privilege is the right word because privilege almost means like you were entitled to something. It's you've, you've, both of us have worked hard to get to where we're at, you know, so we're blessed to be where we are because of the hard work yeah. that we both put in. Maybe you know? that's, yeah, maybe that's a better answer. Cause a lot of times I feel this like trickiness because people are like, why don't you go and show like the real parts of Hawaii and go to like the homeless areas and where families are displaced. Your mom was displaced for a long time of your childhood and adulthood living on the beach. Like that is a reality to a lot of Hawaiians living here. First off, I'm not going to take a camera and go down to people's homes that is their home on the street and film them and post it on my social media. But second off, it's like our reality of living in Hawaii is not the reality for other people, but that is the same thing for anywhere you live. Like the reality of someone living in California that lives in Calabasas is not the same reality of someone who's living in Idaho. And I understand that sometimes it's hard to connect in that way. But where we can connect is like, we've been there where it's really hard to make a dollar and to live. And so I just want to make sure like I'm crystal clear, like I understand the responsibility of living here and saying we live in Hawaii and using our platform for good. And we're in connection with people to, to really yeah. figure out what that means, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, we, we definitely understand that we are blessed to be here. All right. Mars X Club said, what is one cultural thing that you're most appreciated of or the deepest meaning to the Kanakas? And do you want to explain what a Kanaka Moli is? I see. So a Kanaka is somebody that that is of the land, somebody that lives here, you know, and a Kanaka Maoli is someone that's native Hawaiian that, that resides here in the, the Hawaiian islands. And I think something that a value that's most connected to the Kanaka is just the aloha spirit. Um, mm -hmm. People always talk about it like, it's like the most common, commonly used word in our language because that's what people know. Like, aloha, brah. You know, like mm -hmm. it's used so commonly in that way. But really it's a, it's a deep meaning of, there, there's so much meaning behind that word when you say it and use it. And it's also just a, a feeling that you empower that you give to your people. Like, the aloha, like it's it's giving even when you have nothing. And the people here know how to do that. A lot of people have nothing. And a good example of that was just like the Lahaina fires that just happened last year. People at Larry lost everything, but they were still willing to give anything and everything they had, even though they had nothing. And that's like that that value and that beauty that this island and the entire island chain possess. Yeah. I could go on literally for five podcasts of what I love about the culture and the people of Hawaii. And just so you know, there's a little difference with Kanakas and locals. Local could be anyone. I could be considered a local if I'm here living, living here. and contributing to the community, but I'm not Kanaka because I'm, I don't have Hawaiian blood through me. That's kind of like a difference. But anyway, one of the things like when I started dating you that I instantly knew is that you are the most selfless person ever. And every Hawaiian, most every Hawaiian that I've met is like that. They are very selfless. They give, they have the aloha spirit. It's not a mentality, the culture here of what can you do for me? It's what I can do for you. And everyone just looks out for everybody. And so I really wanted our kids to be involved in a community like that, where everyone looks out for everyone. Because even with our families, there are people where I feel like we're family and what the heck? Like, why don't you have my back? Or like, why aren't you doing this or whatever? But then we come here and we have this community and every single person that's in our circle. And there's a, quite a few people who are in our circle here treat us better than any family member would. Like has our back, helps us move, brings over food, I mean, literally the day that we moved here, we had five, six different families. The night we moved here, picking us up from the airport, bringing dinner, unloading our mattresses, setting up pillows and blankets, bringing sheets over. These are all different families. And I was baffled. It's just not that way. It gives way. me chills. It's, not, it's just, 
It's just so beautiful. And I really feel like this is one of the places, maybe there's other places like this throughout the world, but it really still feels like a village here in the sense that like I made smoked pork the other night and I gave it to my neighbor. And then the week prior, they had given me like sashimi and then my other neighbor has bananas, you know, and they give me bananas and they, somebody else have avocados and they trade with them. You know, it's just yeah. so intertwined in that way. It's like where you're, it's so giving here. Yeah. I, it just feels right to be here. I really don't subscribe to, or can relate to people who have a difficult time thinking outside of their own life, whether that's family or not. And it is very apparent when you're here, everyone thinks about gecko. There's a, sorry, there's a big gecko on our ceiling <laughs> Where? right there. L- right there on the blue outside. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There it is. <laughs> Speaking of that, the Camouflage. actual, <laughs> yeah, the actual <laughs> next question. That's a, that's a, sorry. That was like a squirrel moment, but the next question says, how do you deal with the lizards and the cockroaches and the bugs? Because I can't take it. Well, you just got introduced into the ants <laughs> last night. <Yeah. laughs> you walked out to the kitchen and it was like everywhere in a counter. Hundreds of ants. You never understood like living in Utah where I'm like, you guys got to close all your guys' food because yeah. it goes stale and the bugs get into it. Kaloni's favorite bug is like, what is it? The centipedes? No. I, the- what I hate the most? <laughs> Come on, man. I... I absolutely hate cockroaches. I hate the little ones. They're huge. But I extremely hate the ones that are like like this big and they fly. And I'm not okay with that. Cockroaches should <laughs> not fly. I'm not scared of bugs. I don't really care. But there is a crap ton of bugs. And it always takes a moment to be like, whoa, okay, there's cockroaches. There's li- literally lizards in our house. Yeah, you'd be like, go to go Spiders. get that guy. And I'm like, no, got to leave him there. Yeah, he there's there's lots of guys in here. And so lots of them. Like last night, there's pincher bugs. We've killed a ton of pincher bugs in our yeah. house. I just think that if you're living here. You have to. You just have to accept it. They're, mm-hmm. they're going to be there and they're going to find their way in. You live on a tropical island that's warm. So- you're always going to have them. Yeah. Just got to do your best to keep your house clean. All right. Someone asked, what are your thoughts about people moving to Hawaii? That's a really, really tough question because fact of the matter is there's so many Kanaka that live here that are still fighting for like sovereignty. And if you don't know anything about Hawaiian history, just take a look at, at how it was overthrown and taken from the U.S. government. So like there's still, and it happened very recently like in the 60s or 50s, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway, long story short, there's people that are still bitter. So like, it's just extremely difficult. Touch on that a bit Uh, of how Hawaii came to state. Essentially, like, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty, but our king was put into a position by people that he trusted of the U.S. government. And then he was held at gunpoint to sign over the land to the U.S. government. And rather than shedding blood... He opted out of that and turned the land over so that there was not going to be any bloodshed of his people. Yeah. And so, long story short, that's how Hawaii Hawaii became a state. And so, it's hard because it is a beautiful place. And I know that everyone wants to be here because there's really a special… This is a special place. This is why I want to be here. I think that if you decide to do so, you have to do so. Not feeling entitled to be here. Because, hey, I bought my house. I deserve to be here. In a sense, sure. Like you bought the home or you're staying in your home. You can afford to be here. That's great Like you, that you can do that. But you still have to look for what you can do for this place rather than just taking from it. Because already what you're doing by moving here is taking more homes that are not even available to the natives that live here themselves. There's you know? more native Hawaiians living out of Hawaii than in Hawaii because of how expensive it is. And it's a touchy subject for me because I'm not Hawaiian. I'm not Hawaiian, but my husband is and my children are. And so I take this very seriously being here and making sure that I am adding to the community and to the island and bringing awareness to issues rather than adding to the problem. I also think when you're coming here, it's what can I do for the community and what can I help out and just coming with love and humility and be willing to learn and to understand you may not know all the answers and to be okay with, you know, shifting, shifting the way you run your life. A lot of times it's something beautiful that was said to us is our friend Jasmine. She was talking to us how on the map, 
Hawaii is where it's at is basically the chakra to the world. And so many people coming here say it feels so peaceful and it feels like home. And it, it's because it is like the ocean scientifically has cleansing properties of it with magnesium and cleansing you. And there's all the plants and trees that gives us life. And, and so there's so much things that come into it. So I don't know if I can really talk about this subject because I am Howley. I am white and I'm coming here. But I think if you do come here, you have to first come with humility and see how you can help. And And honestly, like visiting here and giving back to Hawaiian shops and local shops is like a huge thing to come and visit and then go back home. Just, yeah, I I think you've touched it or talked about it very well. Look, yeah, look for ways to volunteer if you can. You know, I know you do. I know that you do spend a lot of money to get here and there's valuable time in the, the little time that you probably have here when you visit. But being able to give back to the community and volunteering your time mm-hmm. is it goes a long way. And the people notice that. Yeah. You know, well, I am excited to be here and I'm excited that we just got our first episode of Well Made Done. I hope everyone has a little bit of inspiration from here that even if like your dream is not to move to Hawaii, that you realize life is so dang freaking short and We are, it's just so cheesy because we're not always promised for tomorrow, but like we truly are not. And it comes down to like, you can make anything work if you just do it. You don't need all the answers. You can jump two feet in and just be like, if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. And then I, I figure something else out. And so whether that's living in Europe, buying a farm in Idaho or going to New York city with $200 in your pocket, like you can make anything work. And one thing that I've noticed in our life is manifestation of having the dream of something, but everything you do every day is your actions are building up to what you want to do. And every single morning envisioning, feeling where you were at and what you want to be, because there was years and years that we didn't even, we couldn't even visit because we couldn't even afford it. But yet now fast forward, here we are living in Hawaii and it's been insane. But anyway, anything else to add? Love you. I enjoy being here with you. (laughs) Me too. I'm so, I'm really, truly happy. The happiest I've ever been in my life. And so thank you for listening. Please subscribe. We'll link everything down below so you can go follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Kaloni's been doing a lot of yummy smoked food and his life here in Hawaii and just fishing and just, I get jealous of watching your page and I'm living here with you. (laughs) Like I watch it and I'm like, I want to do that. Like I have FOMO. Anyways, we love you guys and we'll see you next time. If you were inspired by today's episode, I encourage you to tag me on social media at Kat Kamalani so I can personally thank you myself. I would love to hear your thoughts on my podcast. So go ahead and leave a review. So high five for finishing the episode and trying to better yourself. I hope you found it informative, inspiring, and thought-provoking. I will see you again soon for another episode. Take care. Take care.